Hello. Hello indeed. Um, we're going to play. Uh, I love you, Colonel Sanders. A finger winking good dating simulator. Because it's super anime. Apparently. <laughs> Hate him, Gaby J. Yeah, I spent a whole, like, 10 minutes on this VTuber model. I'm, I'm sure that this game will be very, very good. Um, looks the part. And it's officially made by KFC, which is pretty funny. Before we started, tell us your name. My name is James. You sleep softly as the morning sun casts a warm glow through the window of your modest student apartment. The world is peaceful and serene. You could stay in the moment forever. Or you could wake up. Now, now, now. The first day of culinary school is no time to sleep in. Right, smack that clock up. Lying in bed, you stare at the ceiling, thinking about everything that awaits you at the prestigious University of Cooking School Academy for Learning. Your mind begins to wander. Who will be there? What will you cook? What what should you wear? The time begins to fly by, and you find your imagination getting away from you. You'll need to take this seriously. I'm going to take it seriously. This is a very serious game, and a very serious stream that I am streaming upon. On a very serious streaming platform. So serious that I couldn't figure out how to stop my anime figure tilting the neck like that. I better make sure to arrive prepared for the first day. You bust through your morning checklist. Teeth brushed, hair combed, pits de deodorized. Nothing can stop you now. You confidently grab a biscuit, strut out the door and head off to class. Just what you needed to get your blood flowing. Standing in the quad, you gaze upon the magnificent University of Cooking School, Academy for Learning. Here comes your lifelong best friend forever, Miriam. She's the most adorably awkward person you've ever met, and you absolutely love her for it. Good morning, James. Are you- Is my fucking caps- Was my caps lock on? No, it wasn't. Alright, whatever. Good morning, J- Ah, oh, I think it, they're supposed to be capitalized. Good morning, James. Are you excited for the first day of the rest of our lives? Actually, I'm- Because I sure am. Excited, a little nervous. Okay, okay, a lot nervous. What the? It's just this morning I made breakfast for myself, but when I ate it, I couldn't taste any love in the food. What if I'm no good? What if I fail? No, that's actually not right. I did set something up. All right. No, I'm going to go to Streamlabs and fix this shit right now. Going to write a fucking formal complaint. I put a really fucking funny command in there. Um... It is not appropriate. That does not happen. Um, let's have a look. Yeah, it's right there. V tuba. There's everyone. Okay, I'm gonna turn it off and then turn it on again. V tuba. Oh, okay. Yeah, Streamlabs bot is not in my chat for some reason. I don't know why that is. It's not there. Like, I'm just looking at users in chat. Um, it's not there. That would explain why the command isn't working. Because if I, if I go, if I go up time, nothing. Where's he at? Where's he gone? He's not there. Yeah. 
I'm gonna go look at my mod view, perhaps. Sorry. This is, this is, this is indeed frustrating. Yep, Streamlabs is offline. Streamlabs is inactive. That's why the command didn't work. Weird shit. Okay, let's keep playing the game. It's classic Miriam. Raised by Master Chef parents, she's always held herself to a very high standard. Ever since we were little babies playing together and you rescued me from that quicksand box, it's been clear to me that you're the most loving, caring person I know. You're going to do great. <laughs> But with University of Cooking School, Academy for Learning's famous three-day-only semesters, I'm afraid of being left behind and never catching up. A sweet girl, Miriam has always had a flair for the dramatic. This summer, she got so nervous about her first kiss that she chipped the tooth practicing on a mannequin. Should you pep talk her or change the subject to give her some relief? I'm going to haze the fuck out of this girl. Remember last month when we saw that fortune teller and we had our tarot cards read? The lady with the mask who gave me nightmares? I've been trying to forget. I know she looked spooky, but she was so sweet, and she told me that you were destined for great things. Remember that card with the fancy looking tower, and that other card fe featuring the handsome fellow in the red suit? I've been waiting so long to meet a handsome fellow I could call my own. And I'm sure you will fool soon. In no time we'll be graduating, and you'll be delighting the world with your heartfelt cooking in no time at all. As you talk Miriam up, you can feel her nerves begin to ease. You know what, maybe everything will be okay after all. And if not, at least I have these killer bangs. They're not really that great, I'm gonna say. But, um, besides the point. Can you believe I cut them myself? Yes, I can. <laughs> there it is. There it is. We're on the same wavelength, me and this game. It's, it's good stuff. Uh, I cannot believe it. Before you know the other word out, you're rudely interrupted when somebody smacks your books and custom engraved measuring spoons out of your hands and onto the ground. Well, who is it? Fucking Draco Malfoy? It's Ashley, your arch rival. She's totally evil. Yes, she's extremely evil. She's incredibly evil. But you cannot believe that she... But you can't help but be filled with jealousy. She can get anything she wants, and she knows it. <laughs> Fucking... <laughs> okay, KBJ. Okay. Hello, Ashley. 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 Is it... What the fuck is this spelling? <laughs> I didn't see you there, chicken shins. You leave James's shins alone. They are perfectly normal shins. Uh, you can't stand Ashley. Even her name is annoying. You know for a fact that it's actually Ashley. But she had to add extra letters to it to make herself feel better than everyone. If anyone knows what perfect shins look like, it's us. We're not going to let you or your really weird insults get to us. Across the quad you see Ashley's best friend, Van Van the Man Man, has stopped to look at his own reflection in the mirror. His pants are so tight you can see him casually working out his glutes while he styles his hair. No lie, they're rockin' glutes. Ahem, <laughs> Van Van. You rang rang. You've never been sure what their arrangement is, but as long as you've known them, Ashley and Van Van have been just as close as you and Miriam, but substantially more devious. I can't believe that University of Cooking School Academy for Learning would ever allow people like you to attend as students. It's Jojo. It, it is. It is. It's a fucking Jojo character. <laughs> I know, right? You'd think they'd just hand us our diplomas now. Or maybe hire us on as professors. You know, you amateurs could learn a lot from us. With the first day of school about to start, there's not, an arm, not time properly to tell these two off, so you resist the urge. Let's go, Miriam. See you later, losers. As you approach the door, you see a goofy looking kid pushing hard against the window directly next to it. What's this guy's fucking problem? <laughs> Eh? Oopsie. I think it's broken. 
You reach forward and easily pull the door open. Uh, that should do the trick. Hey, nephew! I think you mean, thank you? My name is Pup. I was named after my Pup Pup. He's old. Could someone like this also be a student at the school? He must be one heck of a chef. Also, his name tag clearly says Bob. But I guess he's reading it upside down. This is the funniest shit, actually. <laughs> Hi, Pop. I'm James. So you're going to make me hold this door all day? Nep. With that, the young man walks into the building ahead of you. <laughs> is it just me or is he kind of cute? <laughs> I think it's just you. You both shrug your shoulders before following him into the building. You stand at the edge of the room, unsure of where to sit. Other students wander in and keep themselves busy chit-chatting. A scruffy-looking pooch takes his place at the podium at the front of the class. Adorable. Now, now, quiet down, everyone. Who is this unreasonably cute pup, and why is he in our culinary class? You must be Sprinkles, head instructor and CEO of UCSAL. <laughs> Please, call me Professor Dog, and I may be cute and little and fluffy, but I still demand respect. Wolf. <laughs> what the dog doing? <laughs> what the dog doing? What? A cute dog is our professor? This is the best school ever. I guess only a dog's nose is capable of picking up all of the nuances of fine dining. <laughs> Out of nowhere, wind begins to rush around you as a swirl of cherry blossom petals fill the air inside the classroom. It's chilly. Somebody close the window. And then... He walks in. <laughs> Alright. Anime gaming. <laughs> he walks in. You're immediately swept up in the aura of this new student and his remarkable goatee. Who knew anyone could be so handsome? Time stands still. It's him! It's... If it isn't my favorite student, Harland... Colonel Sanders interrupts Sprinkles. Sorry, Professor Dog before he can finish his sentence. Please, call me Colonel. Colonel Sanders. A hushed murmur rolls through the classroom as Colonel Sanders walks down the aisle of desks. Suddenly, the room is sweltering. My, my, my Colonel Sanders, you're, you're looking quite submissive and breedable today. <laughs> Sweat begins to bead across your bow, brow. You, you feel like everyone is looking at you, and you're not entirely wrong. And this over here must be sweetie, sweaty, what the fuck? Sweaty sweats a lot. Maybe, maybe we should open that window back up before faucet pits melts into a puddle and evaporates entirely. I mean, I mean, if you're fucking eating KFC, you're probably sweating. Hold on just a second. Nobody talks to my friend like that. You two both know my name. We were in the same kindergarten class. And what is with your really weird insults? And besides, when James sweats, it's not gross. It's beautiful. Look at that shimmer. I take a moment to clean myself up. It's a good thing you didn't forget about that deodorant this morning. This classroom is hot, hot, hot. Fuck yeah. Professor Dog steps in to settle the class down and set some ground rules. Welcome to University of Cooking School, Academy for Learning, the greatest culinary academy in the world. The birthplace of culinary legends past, present, and future. Many challenges await you. There will be tears. There will be blood. There might even be really adorable tiny food. And when all is said and done, there will be a battle. You will lift your sporks and compete in the broom cooking arena. Just then, another student enters the classroom and interrupts the professor's rousing speech. Hey guys, sorry I'm late. I hope everyone had a good summer. I really miss... Quiet! Late to class is bad enough, but interrupting my monologue? You're on the fast track out of here, young man. Are you sure you're even in the right place? 
And don't you recognize me? This is my third year in this school with you as my teacher. Everyone stares at him blankly. Does no one remember me? I'm... You're expelled if you utter one more word before I finish. Let that be a lesson to you students. The tardiness is unacceptable. Even Clank made it here on time, rolling halfway across town on his tiny wheels. You turn to see that student Sprinkles is referencing. It appears to be some sort of industrial kitchen appliance. <laughs> Beast. me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, this is Clank, everyone. I'm probably, probably going to romance Clank. The class bursts into laughter. Oh, Clank, you rascal. Sprinkles walks in the classroom as everyone stands in silent obedience. When he gets to you, he lifts his nose into the air and takes a deep sniff. Hmm, your diet is lacking. Based on what I'm picking up here, you definitely need a multivitamin. You should be taking better care of yourself. You've never had a talking dog as a teacher before, but Sprinkles' reputation for being smart and tough is well known. You decide to try and butter him up by giving him a treat from your pocket. But what kind? Ooh, um... Uh, beef, beef, beef. You reach beneath your apron and return with a small bit of beef jerky in your hand. Sprinkles' eyes go wide as he locks onto it. Beef? Are you trying to give me a heart attack? I would never eat that. You clearly do not belong here. Please remove your apron and then remove it for yourself from this class and this school. Wait, what? Holy fuck, I just game over it on that. What? <laughs> This is this is a game of extremely high quality. Um, it is quite clear to me this this is something special. I will be trying again. How far back is this gonna take me? Oh my god, are you serious? Alright, I'm gonna Kaboom, 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 kaboom. <laughs> Why is there a fucking JoJo character in this? Maybe it's the rubber ball that I'm supposed to give him. You reach beneath your apron and return with a rubber ball in your hand. Sprinkles' eyes go wide as he locks onto it. You toss the ball and he bounds after it, grabbing in his mouth and swinging from side to side before dropping it. The thrill passes quickly. It's not clear if that endeared you to him or not. Settle down, young chefs. Take your seats and prepare to have your minds opened to the amazing possibilities of culinary creation. As everyone rushes to claim their favorite seats, you're left standing at the front of the room. Only two options remain. Hey James, there's still a seat here. It seems that no one has claimed this seat next to me, if you're interested. Yeah, okay. Colonel Sanders. Colonel Sanders. I gotta, I gotta get in with this guy. It appears he brought no books, pens, or pencils. However, his perfect upright posture shows off a seriousness that makes you confident in his desire to learn. Thanks for offering me this seat. I've only had two rules. Do all you can, and do it the best you can. It's the only way you ever get that feeling of accomplishing something. That's so inspiring. A little off topic if you ask me, but okay. As soon as you settled into your seat, the professor makes an announcement. Think fast, it's time for a pop quiz. <laughs> Yay, a quiz about me. This is incredibly important and surprisingly short quiz will tell me if you're ready for life at culinary school. Keep your knives sharp and your focus sharper. Here comes question number one. If train A is traveling to point B and train B is traveling to point A, how important is it to wash your hands before cooking? Extremely. Looking at you, Pop. 
That's right. Forest is to tree as chicken is to feather. That's right. What is the most efficient eating utensil ever created? A spork. That's right, a spork. What food is best for a broken heart? Ooh, either anything. It's not camel meat. Or it could be a pancake that looks like a silly face. I think that perhaps anything. That's right. Is Sprinkles a good boy? Fuck no. You expelled me before. Because I gave you food. <laughs> He's a talking dog that teaches at a culinary school. He is the best boy. That's right. Your total score is... Perfect score. 5 out of 5. Well, be honest. Did you cheat? You look up to see that Colonel Sanders has been watching you tally your score. He's impressed. I know we just met, but I have to confess. I think you have a beautiful brain. Hot diggity, James. You just scored some major Colonel Sanders points with that performance. <laughs> May I have your attention, students? I have an important announcement to make. Time for lunch. Wow, the cafeteria is as nice as any restaurant you've ever eaten at. It makes sense that a school dedicated to cooking would also be serious about eating. A delicious, a delicious fragrance wafts through the room and tickles the end of your nose. Your mouth waters. Do you smell that? It must be our lunch. It smells crazy good. Everyone, can I have your attention? Is it about lunch? No, I just wanted to apologize for my tardiness. You see, I was... Howdy, folks. I'd like to make an announcement. Hey, I was... It's about lunch. Everyone cheers. But I... Shh. Lunch, lunch, lunch. He said shh. In honor of the new semester, I have prepared something special to share with everyone for lunch. Uh -huh. That must be the smell I smell. Indeed, that smell. You hold your breath, waiting to see what food this mysterious student has created. You've heard that he's very talented, but were the rumors true? Is this... Colonel Sanders lifts a large bucket of ants his head. Its contents glimmer in the light. Piled high are huge pieces of chicken, breaded and fried to a crispy golden finish. The aroma envelopes you, and you begin to feel warm and safe. Colonel Sanders has filled a bucket with chicken. What a novel concept. Your stomach begins to grumble, as if to say, stop thinking and start eating. For years, I have been developing a secret recipe for perfect fried chicken. By my calculation, nothing is less than 11 herbs and spices are required to achieve the perfect balance of flavors. You look around and notice that every other student has a pen and paper and is scribbling notes as fast as they can. But that's all I'll say about that. What, you think we want your stupid secret recipe, dude? Pshaw. Sure. No, my dude, no. I'm just drafting a last will and testament in case one of those ingredients is a uh, poison. Got him. He looks around nervously to see if anyone else is laughing at his sick burn. You wait to see what Zinger Ashley is prepared to follow up, but she suddenly takes a different approach. Yeah, and I was just like writing in my diary. Dear diary, today I smelled something beautiful. I knew at that moment that only the hands of a true gentleman could fry a chicken so tender. You see her body language change from bitter and evil to sweet and innocent as she slides closer to Colonel Sanders. She realizes that she is destined for greatness and fame with cooking skills like this. She wants him all to herself. Back off, bitch. Oh, please. Well, Van Van the Man Man, if you don't want any, I'll take his. Well, hold on. I mean, I guess I'll try it. He takes one bite and his eyes grow wide. He starts contorting his face as he tries to hold in his pure exhilaration and act unimpressed. Easy now. There's enough for everyone. Please, my fellow classmates, dig in. 
you take one of the pieces of fried chicken out of his bucket and you sink your teeth into it. It's amazing. Tasting Colonel Sanders' food transports you to another dimension. Alone with your taste buds, gripping a drumstick in your hand, you float weightlessly. Hmm. Savor the moment and everything that it tells you about Colonel Sanders' culinary art. The flavors in your mouth are beautiful, pure, heavenly. What a guy. Alone with the flavors, you feel something that can only be described as love. For a man... For a flavor, are they the same? After tasting his food, you try to get some one-on-one -on -one time with Colonel Sanders. Colonel Sanders smiles ever so softly as you approach. He stops what he is doing and allows you to break the silence. Colonel, I wondered if I could talk to you for a second. Anything for a fellow chef. What exactly was on that chicken? Ha ha ha! How bold to come out and ask. It's an idea I had for a new combination of flavors that will make me my fortune and establish my legacy for all time as I open a chain of highly successful fried chicken restaurants. No big deal. It's just you and me here talking. I can keep a secret. In fact, I've got some of my own that I'd be willing to trade. What's the rush? The semester is only getting started. We've got two more whole days to get to know each other. He's clearly not going to give it up easily but it doesn't hurt to be persistent. You know what they say about secrets, Colonel? Shouldn't learning be fun? Aww. You've got Moxie, I'll give you that. Colonel Sanders looks both ways to make sure you're truly alone and then leans in. You can feel his warm breath as he whispers. Just one ingredient, but you can't tell. I use white box. White box is the best fucking herb. I tell you what, man. It's something my great-grandmother taught me. She was really big on the white box. White box? Wow. I, you'd never have guessed that. In fact, you're not even sure where you'd get some if you searched. <laughs> Maybe the fucking supermarket. I don't know, man. Is there a fucking grocer at your place? A delicatessen? Um, <laughs> where you at? You in civilization? While you're wrapped up in that huge revelation... You notice that Colonel Sanders has disappeared. While everyone else is still in the cafeteria, you decide to look for him. You find Colonel Sanders outside, standing in the quad. Oh, it's you again, howdy. Sometimes I like to come outside and look at the school buildings. I think about how my story will continue on after I've graduated. It sounds like you have big plans. I dare say the biggest. I will leave my mark on this world. You can bet on that. Alone together for the first time, you figure now is the perfect moment to show your personality to him. Neg him to show your own strength? Fuck no. Wow him with a big idea to add an additional ingredient that really spices things up. Ooh, 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 ooh. You know what? You know what? Go big or go home. You know, about that, I was thinking about your secret recipe. I don't doubt it. It was, has a way of leaving an impression on all who taste it. You decide to show him that you also know a thing or two about blowing minds with new flavors. I actually had some thoughts on how you could improve it. Improve it? You want to change my secret recipe? And you think you can do better? Have you heard of Hannah... Habanero peppers? <gasps> Heard of them? I tend an entire garden of chili pepper varieties. Ha Habanero, P Poblano, Cayenne. But that's not the point. You can't just toss new ingredients into my secret recipe and expect to improve it. A recipe is about balance. It involves careful consideration and refinement. I didn't mean to let this be the last time you imp improvise on my recipes, James. I'm headed back to class for the next lesson. That didn't go as planned. Uh-oh. <laughs> I know, I've, I've fucking... I've, I've shot my shot with Colonel Sanders and missed. This is not good. <laughs> you better head back inside. But you wait a moment so that Colonel Sanders doesn't think you're desperately chasing after him. Yeah. <laughs> you, 
You step into the massive cooking arena where all the afternoon lessons will take place. Each student gets an oven and all of the tools and ingredients that they would need. Look at this place! It's magnificent! Finally, we get to show our stuff! Wait a second! Oh no! We have to show our stuff! What if I totally blow it? You're not going to blow anything, except maybe kisses to the crowd of fans you're going to earn with your signature adorable tiny food creations. Welcome, students, to the cooking arena! <laughs> hi, hi, James, how you doing? <laughs> For today's lesson, we'll be cooking with partners. Hurry up and pair off. Naturally, Miriam looks over at you, but unable to control yourself, you pounce on Colonel Sanders. Hey Colonel, would you like to tackle this, les this lesson as a team? A team of two, that is, me and you, if that wasn't clear. Wanna be my partner? Aww. Sure James, I'll prepare our station. Without you as a partner, Miriam was left standing all alone. Two different students quickly take notice. Hello, new partner. Beep boop, beep me. <laughs> oh my, two potential partners. I'm so sorry, gentlemen, but I don't know who to choose. Looks like you'll have to pick for her. Friend duties can be a little awkward, but that's the price you pay for not being alone forever. Who do you want to ask to be Miriam's partner? Well, this is fucking bad. Okay, Pop would be funny. Clank would be nicer. I think that maybe Pop. You know what? I'm gonna just throw her under the bus. I'm just gonna shithouse her. Um, you're paired up with Pop. Sorry, Clank, but I think Miriam will be partnering with Pop today. <laughs> Pop gives a big smile as he steps up to the same station as Miriam. I'm a chef. He holds up a banana and without peeling it, Proudly eats the entire thing. It's disconcerting, but Miriam is too kind to be grossed out. I love your enthusiasm, Pop. She looks at you like, really, this kid? And I'm like, really, yes, I'm shithousing you. But it's too late to change my choice now. Now it's time to focus on your own cooking classwork. Alright, you two, for today's lesson, we're going to keep it simple. Pick a basic dish and divide up the steps. No chef is an island. It takes two flints to make a fire. You get the idea. Which dish do you su suggest to your partner, Colonel Sanders? Fake tartar seems easy enough. It's fancy and you don't even need to cook it. Using octopus will blow Colonel Sanders' mind. Your grandmother's mashed potatoes and gravy. I see where this is going. I see where this is going. I see where this is going. My grandmother's mashed potatoes and gravy. It's it's a thing. They they give you that shit um, when you get like a fucking box of fried chicken, um, and it's fucking inedible. It's not even food. It's just chemical based. Um, but that is exactly what they want me to pick, because then he'll be like, "Oh my god, this is amazing! I'm gonna put it on the menu at KFC." This is an origin story. I have always been something of a down-home chef. I was thinking we could make something warm, inviting, comforting. Maybe mashed potatoes. <gasps> and gravy? I wouldn't imagine one without the other. Colonel Sanders casts a coy look at you, causing your whole face to go beet red. Embarrassed, you quickly turn away. <laughs> I'll go get the potatoes. No, please, let me. Picking perfect produce is a passion of mine. <sighs> Looks like things are getting pretty fresh around here. Does anyone have a crush on Colonel Sanders? We're just cooking partners. Mind your own business. <laughs> Sanders' heart is my business, and you better keep your fingers off my man. Did anyone call for me? Uh, jeez, no, Van Van. While I'm over here, Crushing James's dreams. You're supposed to be taking care of our classwork. That was the deal, remember? Colonel Sanders returns, arms full of peeled potatoes. He tosses them into boiling water and turns his attention to you and your old friends. Oh, howdy there, Ashley, Van Van. Are we working in a quartet instead of a duet now? Actually, no. It looks like James is struggling, so we offered to give them a hand. 
You know how it is. These young amateur chefs need a lot of mentoring. I was going to say, Colonel Sanders, maybe I could teach you a thing or two about fancy food. Maybe one day you might be able to get up to my level. Ha! Doubt it. Don't be rude, Van Van. Personally, I have no doubts whatsoever about Colonel Sanders' ability to concoct creations worthy of admiration. After all, your fried chicken was quite spectacular. But Colonel, if you ask me, I might make a better partner for you than this thing that has positioned itself at your station. Don't you feel deep down that we cast complimentary shadows? We fit together like a thigh and a drumstick. It just makes sense. Nothing about this makes any sense, but one thing is clear. She's coming for Colonel if you don't watch out. Ashley's really going at you hard. You need to ask for some backup here before things get ugly. Okay, I'm gonna turn to Colonel Sanders, hunker hunks in your time of need. Or turn to Marion, who I just completely shithoused before she's like stuck with the the guy, the other guy. Um, I'm gonna have to turn to Colonel Sanders in my time of need. I'm here to learn and express myself via my cuisine, not bicker with prima donnas. Partners were chosen at the beginning of class, so let's all respect the format, okay? You turn to Colonel Sanders to confirm that you're on the same page. I choose Colonel Sanders, and Colonel Sh Sanders chose me. Isn't that right? A businessman respects all fair agreements. From contracts to handshakes, I took on James as my partner for this activity, and I stand by it. Based on your team's behavior, I say you're perfect for each other. Neither of you has James's natural talent or their loyalty. Being defended by Colonel Sanders leaves you feeling proud and full of potential. You look for Sprinkles and hopes he might step in, but he's nowhere to be found. Damn those cute corgis in their short but sturdy nature. You look down at your station and realize that in the tension of the moment, your hands have been cooking on autopilot. Distracted by the drama, you've already crushed the boiled potatoes into a perfectly creamy mashed texture, with plenty of butter and cream for flavor. It's as if your natural passion guided you through the steps. You know so well why your attention was elsewhere. I know just what to do. Colonel Sanders extends his hand. He's holding a beautiful white porcelain gravy boat, out of which he pours a smooth, brown gravy, smothering your nearly finished potato dish. Gravy flows down the mound of mashed potatoes. The results look spectacular. Granny would be very proud. Colonel Sanders holds a spork out to you. You reach out and grab hold of it, but he doesn't immediately let go. The two of you stand holding the same spork, and for that small moment, all of the madness and pressure in this crazy world stops. <laughs> Your eyes lock. The moment is electric. Time stands still. If you love something, set it free. Together, you dig the utensil into the mashed potatoes and lift a heaping sporkful up. When you see Ashley with a sinister look, you know she's plotting against you to be with Colonel Sanders. And then, filled with rage and without thinking, you fling the sporkful of mashed potatoes right into Ashley's stupid, beautiful face. Van Van, do something, do something! Scooping up a fingerful, Van Van tastes the dripping mashed potatoes and gravy and realizes that it's delicious. Horrified by this revelation, he slinks away. Will he ever be able to cook something with so much love and integrity? Hold on right there, James. We do not waste food in the broom cooking arena. Colonel Sanders, I expect better from you. If you throw one more spoonful, you both better be prepared to eat it from wherever it lands. Can I have the potato face? Van Van rushes back over. A covered dish in his hand. Mashed potatoes with gravy? Pathetic. In just a few minutes, I've prepared a full meal. Gaze upon my speciality. A braised tentacle of octopus in my silky salt water sauce. Plated on a battle axe blade. Forged by my supreme chef ancestors. <laughs> You've ignored me for too long. That ends it. It is I who will have the first bite. And you all look on with envy. The interrupting student rushes at Van Van, 
who swaps a bite of his own signature dish right, right off the plate. No, don't. Something about this dish doesn't strike my nose quite right. I think the octopus was rushed and may have turned in the process. The results could be toxic. Too late. It has been eaten. Uh, I think I left something in the oven. I don't feel so good. It killed him! It killed him! Holy shit! There's manslaughter in this game. Everyone step back. Don't take another bite. When you look back at the plate, the rest of it is gone. You notice the tip of the tentacle being slurped up in Pop's mouth. Pop winces in pain for just a moment, and then is almost immediately back to his oblivious self. Oopsie. Tastes like poison. The entire glass is fast is gathered to watch Pop's final moments. Shock has frozen the whole crowd. They are as motionless as statues. The fast bell rings, disrupting that moment and snapping everyone back to reality. It would appear that Pop's enthusiasm for trying new things, despite obvious danger, has inoculated him against poisons of all kinds. I'm not sure the professors here make enough money. Um, hello? I just turned into a ghost over here. Seeing that you're shaken up by that really annoying student and all these nonsense, Colonel Sanders approaches you. I'm sorry you had to go through that. Please, let me walk you home. What? Like, for real? Oh, come on. You follow Colonel Sanders out of the room. At night, the school building has taken on another vibe entirely. It's dark and more than a little spooky. Colonel Sanders stands in, in the quad neon glow. Colonel Sanders stands in the quad's neon glow and speaks softly. Those mashed potatoes you made in class today. Before you go on, I want you to know, they're not a mere representation of my skills. I didn't even realize I was making them. They were amazing. Tasting them, it reminded me why I became so passionate about food to begin with. Colonel Sanders is getting choked up. Cooking is obviously important to him, in a way that you find inspiring. Now might be the perfect time to tell him you're developing feelings for him. Colonel Sanders. Yes, James? There's something I need to tell you. Hold it right there. There's something I need to tell you first. Oh, jeez. You see, when I was just a boy, I had a dream that one day I would be the greatest chef the world has ever seen. And every day since, I have been working towards that dream. Day and night, never stopping, never resting. Also lifting a lot of weights, like, like so many weights. We should follow our dreams within all of our hearts. That our souls may grant them like wishes floating on a shooting star. Hey, no, I, you, shut up. I'm the one here to say inspirational stuff and be the star of that story. Are we forgetting that your cooking literally killed a guy? <laughs> this, this is this is actually really, 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 really funny. <laughs> you can't prove that. I also saw you kill that guy. What was his name? Somewhere in the distance, you hear a long, sad sigh. Forget him. We're talking about me. Me, 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 me. I'm the hero. The, what? what? <laughs> the Spork Monster is here to fight a hero. What the fuck? Uh, I think I left the fridge door open. Uh, later, nerds. How dare you threaten me just as I was letting down my guard and connecting with another chef on an emotional level. Be afraid. Be very afraid of me because I'm a monster, see? He's rhyming. Is he rhyming on purpose or is that just a coincidence? Before you can discuss syntax any further, it's a turn-based fight sequence. Oh my god, turn-based fight sequence. What will you do? Um, 
Um, I'm gonna crack a beer open while I don't have to fucking read shit. Usually when I'm streaming, I'll, I'll have like a drink open, but I can't fucking drink because I'm constantly talking. It's fucked, man. What will you do? I will attack. You decide to go on the attack. What attack will you use? I will cook with love. That's the best attack of them all. <laughs> cook with love does one damage. Okay. It just got real. That attack really upset Spork Monster. Oh no. I really care about Spork Monster's feelings. Spork Monster goes on the attack. They spit hot gravy at you. You take one damage. Um, I'm going to go on the attack. It worked last time. Yeah, I don't fucking know. What am I supposed to do? I'm going to cook with more love. Nothing will stop me. Spork Monster will not forget this. Spork Monster is feeling really threatened by your attack. <laughs> Sport Monster focuses their mashed mind and draws in energy from Mother Earth itself. They grow larger and more intimidating. How will you respond? I'm going to cook with love. We've, we've established this. Cooking with love is the answer. This is the way that we do things. We cook with love. That's it. There's nothing else we can do. At this rate, the semester will probably be over before this fight is. Spork Monster is no quitter. Buffed up and ready to rumble. They go on the attack once again. Spork Monster use Utility Tendon Style. You take two damage from the attack. If you take more, much more damage, you're not going to survive the battle. Again, I am cooking with love. I am cooking with love. That's what I'm doing. Spork Monster is using cheese sauce onto the lawn of the quad. I wonder who's going to have to clean that up. Feeling vulnerable, Sport Monster prepares for its ultimate attack, Rounded Edge. Vile villain, your reign of terror stops here. Colonel Sanders summons the energy of a thousand chickens. Pot pie, power pinch. <laughs> okay. Pot pie, power pinch does 10 damage. Spork Monster is defeated. You saved me. An injured Spork Monster spews steam into the night. Spare this wretched beast. You managed to tamp down your disgust at the sight of this gnarly beast long enough to realize that he is still a living creature with a pure soul who deserves your pity, not your wrath. Be gone, beast, and don't you dare come back for a follow-up encounter tomorrow. I won't forget this. I certainly won't be back, like you said. Fourth monster scuttles off into the night. The defeated monster left behind a special item. It appears at first to be a cookbook, but upon closer inspection, it's much more. It's a book of magic spells, with a golden chicken on the cover. You open the cover and find a library card tucked inside. The last name to have signed it out is Borko. Hmm. Borko. That name sounds strangely familiar. Your blood is pumping as you stand in the quiet of the night, holding the mysterious book in your hands. As you come down from your battle buzz, you realize that your final attack has left you completely depleted. The world around you begins to fade away. Without any energy to keep your eyes open, darkness overtakes you. The image of Colonel Sanders flashes before your eyes as you fall asleep. He must have helped you get home. In a tired state, you won't know if you could have made it without him. What a guy. You want to thank him, but you don't have the strength to utter a single word. You feel your covers being pulled up over you as you are tucked in tightly. Good night, my colonel. In your dream, you're together with Colonel Sanders. For some reason, Sprinkles is also there, instructing your love. Dreams are weird. Zzz. You awake on day two, and attempt to process the wild visions you had. Were they memories, or premonitions? And there, 
was that secret ingredient that Colonel Sanders went ahead and told you outright. Not much of a secret, huh? It's probably just because he trusts you so much. Sure, that makes sense. We'll go with that. You meet up with your bestie in front of the school. Before you can tell her about the encounter with the Spork Monster, she launches into a story of her own. Okay, I know this might sound a little strange, but I think I might be, um... If she's getting together with fucking the, the other guy, if that's what's happening, please tell me that's not what's happening, girl. Okay, I'm prepared for the worst. I think I might like Pop. Yeah, no wonder I ditched you to try and get with Colonel Sanders. Holy shit, girl. I mean, you have the worst haircut I've ever seen in my life, but you need to hear it from me. You can do so much better. I cannot stress this enough. Like him? Like, like, like? I know, it sounds like it's moving too fast, but there's something about him. I like him. Like, like him. We got to talking after class, and he's actually a totally sweet guy. Not only that, but he's really smart. He told me all kinds of stories about Colonel Sanders. Now this is the thing, right? If I picked, if I picked like the fucking appliance, would she have started dating the appliance? Because that would be even funnier. Honestly, I should have, I should have picked the appliance instead. Do you know that Colonel Sanders enlisted in the army when he was only free? Not only that, but he founded a special unit of super soldiers who all wear the same hats just because he put a hat on one time and thought it looked cool. But Colonel Sanders doesn't even wear a hat. He wears a ribbon tie. Either way, it'd, maybe it'd be best if you took it slow with this new boy. Like I am with Colonel Sanders. Yeah man, I'm taking it really fucking slow with Colonel Sanders. Really fucking slow. You and Colonel Sanders? The coolest guy in school? The most famous student to ever attend University of Cooking School Academy for Learning? You're a thing now? We definitely connected yesterday. Haha, <laughs> sure you did. You're great. Why wouldn't he be into you, I guess? Laughing at the implication that you and Colonel Sanders might be a thing is definitely not cool. You are great. You have an idea about how to prove that your love is real. Well, if he's not into me, why did he tell me one of his secret ingredients? The white box. He told me the white box. I know the white box is one of the ingredients. How do you explain that? Your bestie's eyes light up. A secret ingredient. Yeah, I just said that. I see the, a secret ingredient. Is there a dramatic echo in here? Miriam checks to make sure you're alone before continuing. So this summer, while I was on vacation with my family, a lovely man approached me in the botanical garden where I was wandering. This can't be good. He told me all about his passion for spices. Secret spices. The man even gave me some to show what he meant, and he said it was a powder created from super duper rare dried flower petals, and that if I did him a big favor, I could have some of my own. Please, Miriam, don't tell me. So I filled my suitcase with them and brought them home. He was so nice he even met me at the gate when I arrived. Later when I cooked with them, a very strange feeling came over me and the flavor was unlike anything I'd ever tasted. I think you're being really liberal with the meaning of spices here. Whatever, anyhow, we both share an interest in cooking, so we stayed in touch, you know, like pen pals. I bet he would love to know more about new spices. <laughs> Gaming. This is definitely hardcore gaming, Tante. We're gaming. We're gaming harder than anyone ever has before. Well, I'm definitely not supposed to share Colonel Sanders' secret recipe. And besides, I only know one ingredient, the white box. So I don't think it would be much use to anyone. Please, please, please. It would mean the world to me. No one has known it would come from you or Colonel Sanders. What do you think? Should you protect Colonel Sanders' secret, or share it with your bestie? Well, I don't even know why I'm friends with this fucking girl at this point, so I'm gonna make up a fake ingredient. How about, fuck you. My loyalty is to Colonel Sanders, now and forever. 
I will die for Colonel Sanders in this life and infinite, infinitely more reincarnations. You quickly think of a fake ingredient name. I don't know, how about... It was Eye of Newt. I know, sounds like some kind of witch's potion. But what can you do? Eye of Newt, wow! Her eyes light up, imagining such a thing, and you figure that you satisfied her curiosity, and she'll move on. However, she immediately turns around and does some thumb typing on her phone that you can't quite see. That's probably not good. Before you can ask her to confirm that she was definitely not texting secrets to other people, you're interrupted. A wind rushes in. Cherry blossom petals fill the air. It's Colonel Sanders! He's arriving at school! Um, um, um... This might be a bit desperate, I don't know. You know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stand back and just let him do his thing. Colonel Sanders' horse is truly a thing of beauty. Without ever acknowledging that he's being watched, he does a short horse dance before dismounting with a flourish. He then slaps the beautiful creature gently on its rear, sending it running free into the countryside. You are so struck by the sight of him that you lose the ability to speak coherently. Oh, I didn't realize anyone was watching. Don't worry, he knows my name. He knows his way home. It's fucking Lord of the Rings ass shit. Um, you attempt to compliment Colonel Sanders, but the words don't come out exactly right. What? What? Are, what's the? B, 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 uh, dang it! That's what I just said. Being a good friend, Miriam attempts to cover for you. A good friend? Holy shit, she asked me, like, oh, do you know the secret ingredient? And, like, I lied to her, obviously, but... But then she said, oh, I'm gonna keep it a secret, too. And as soon as I told her, she turns around and starts texting on her phone. She's not a good friend. I'm glad I shithoused her. What is this shit? Miriam, fuck off. Okay, Miriam is attempting to cover for me. Oh, James just gets really nervous around people they like. Holy fuck! Miriam. Not okay. Maybe maybe this is revenge. Maybe she doesn't actually like Pop. She's just fucking with me. She's fucking with me because she's seething with complete anger. She's like, um... Yeah. This is, this is what it is. She's actually messing with me. She's trying to screw up my chances for Colonel Sanders. That's what's happening here. James gets really nervous around people they like. What? This is not helping. I mean, they got food poisoning and were up all night. It was gruesome. You should have seen it. She gives you a wink and a smile as if to say, Situation handled. Can't blame a girl for trying. And with that, Colonel Sanders disappears into the school, leaving you and Mariam to follow. When you enter the classroom, you can see your two rivals, Ashley and Van Van, are doing something bad. By the way they're hiding, you know it must be really bad. Like counterfeiting recipes bad, experimenting with restricted ingredients bad, summoning a demon bad? You try to get a peek over Van Van's hulking shoulder, but he sees you coming. Well there, little one. I'm not sure you're ready to handle this. Um, okay, so maybe I'm... Maybe I'm not following the incredibly complicated narrative here, but yeah, uh, why hasn't Van Van been arrested for manslaughter? Like, I feel like that might be a thing. Perhaps that... No. Because, like, that's the thing. It's like, if you cook food and somebody else eats it and they die because it was cooked so badly, you can, like, you can get convicted of manslaughter for that. That's a thing. That's real. Like, anyway... Why don't you make like a bee and mind your own wax, honey? I'm going to tell them to stop acting immature. You immediately dress the rivals down for their immature behavior. I mean, that's fair enough. Like I can talk, but you know. Culinary school is to be respected. This kind of nonsense is a waste of everyone's time. Now you've upset them. <gasps> oh, and you're the emperor of cooking, are you? You make the rules? I'm not sure you'd know a good meal if it ate you. Being the best chef in the world makes more than just culinary schools. It takes creativity, 
It takes panache. Panache? I don't fucking know how to pronounce that word. And it doesn't and it doesn't hurt to use a little evil. Mate. Mate. Um somebody ate your food yesterday and died. I don't think you should be talking about cooking like this. And like using evil as an ingredient, like maybe you should perhaps consider. Like mate. Mate. Anyway. You finally get a look at what it is they were hiding, and you immediately you instantly recognize it. It's a book, just like the one you found after your encounter with the spork monster. That's the same book I found last night in the quad. Ashley immediately elbows Van Van, who hides the book behind his back. I don't know what you're talking about. This book is a family heirloom, and its contents are secret. You notice that they haven't been studying the book. They haven't just been studying the book. They've got Pop pinned to the wall, and they're tossing potato skins at him as he tries to catch them in his mouth. <laughs> We're playing, hehehe. <laughs> Before you can dig in any further, you're interrupted by the arrival of more students. It's almost time for class. Beep beep. Clank must be running late. He's in such a hurry that he rolls right over Van Van's meaty foot. Ugh. Hey, watch it, you bucket of bolts. Oh no, poor... whatever his name is. They're being mean to the robot. What? Well, you watch how you talk to him. He didn't do anything. Well, he did, but... you know. Did it womp. <sighs> Who do you think you're talking to? I've never heard such a language. Not even from a stand mixer. Womp womp. No, your mother was a stand mixer. <laughs> Van Van jumps to attack Clank, but Clank shocks Van Van, sending him flying across the room. <laughs> Protect me, Colonel Sanders. These crazed men are about to come to blows. I think it must be over me, but I'm not interested in either of them. Wow. Okay. Ashley's tone is completely changed in an instant. She bats her eyelashes at Colonel Sanders. Surely she must know that this is a ruse, right? Surely he must know. Come on, man. Colonel Sanders ain't, ain't, ain't no dumb bitch. He's no himbo. Gentlemen, get a hold of yourselves. Save it for the arena, at least. Or don't. Honestly, what do I care? I've got lofty career aspirations to focus on. Maybe I can help you with your business plan. Just then, Sprinkles arrives to, arrives to signal the true, true start of the class day. He's panting, which doesn't seem that abnormal. He's a professor, but he's also a dog. Students, students, please take your seats. I apologize for my late arrival. I spent the morning chasing a car all around town. My tiny little rigs are very, very tired. But I'm here now, and I hope you're ready to learn. You try to give Sprinkles a pat on the head, but he snarls at you. Sorry, sorry, I get a little worked up when people try and pet me before I've had my morning coffee. Let that be a lesson to you. Before, After he catches his breath, Sprinkles can gain, regains control of the classroom. Without further ado, we'll review the global history of my favorite fowl, the chicken. You want to pay attention to the lesson. Truly you do. Which is why, in, in 1776, at the signing of the Declaration of Independence, it was a chicken who first signed their name. But you can't help but daydream about Colonel Sanders, and you miss most of the important parts. When you come to, Sprinkles is holding a tray of food in front of you. Well, James? Naturally, this appears to you to be a simple platter. Which item do you want to sample? Huh. Which one do I want? A shimmering pepper. You know what? A brightly colored pepper sh stands out from the other items. It sparkles in a most eye-catching way. So naturally you reach out, grab it, and eat it right away. However, your body is not prepared for the heat. The pepper is triggered an intense spice hallucination. It feels like forever as you trip through the universe. Oh no, it's the ghost. My friend! Ooh! This guy again? He literally got fucking killed and like, he's still the butt of the joke. Everyone's like, come on dude, you died, fuck off. W why are you still here? I'm here to give you an important message. Ooh. 
you must avenge my death and fulfill your destiny. All you must do is... <laughs> I would say, to fulfill your destiny, all you must do is... <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm, I'm coughing up spice. It's fine, I'll work through... <laughs> to fulfill... <laughs> the prophecy. <laughs> you must... You feel yourself begin to regain consciousness. Oh, man. You come in and find everyone is staring at you. That pepper was the last of its kind on Earth, and now it's gone forever. You think to yourself, geez, I should pay better attention. We'll make mistakes. I'm sure he'll forgive you someday. Come on, it's time for lunch. They're like, did I do that wrong? Or do, do I still have the hallucination if I do something differently? I don't know. Tis, 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 something, I don't know. Before anyone can relax, the cafeteria lights are dim, and your rival has entered to make a dramatic announcement. Today's lunch will be prepared via timed competitive cookout. The liberal theatrics of these two is off the charts. Hmm. See, I don't want to, I don't want to actually eat anything that they cook. I gotta challenge them. Come on, I gotta do that. A bit of lunchtime competition, eh? Count me in. If I have to wipe the tables with you fools before I set my lunch down on it, so be it. I'm not the fool. You're the fool. Fool. Good one, Van Van. I like your gumption, James. Oh, he likes me. He liked something that I did. I'll be watching your performance. Just as things reach a boiling point, Sprinkles steps in. Surely he'll put a step to stop to this madness. Now, now, students, please settle down. This is a lunchroom, not a sporting court. Finally, a little sense. You breathe a sigh of relief. At least not until we turn on the timer. And then a huge light blasts you in the face, flashing the words, timer ready. That's what I'm talking about. Ahoo! I stand corrected. The hard way builds solidly a foundation of confidence that cannot be swept away. He's, he's just, he's just fucking, he's just dropping the deepest shit. And that's an original quote by me, in case anyone was wondering. Hope its message lifts you to victory. Are you, are you euphoric because you're enlightened by your own intelligence? And not some phony God's blessing. He's like a diamond. I was formed under pressure. And now is my chance to shine. I will defeat you myself. You had his chicken and you made mashed potatoes and gravy on day one. And now you're feeling like you can really impress him again here. It's time to boil some water for the potatoes. Think fast. If the timer runs down, you'll be forced to pick randomly. What temperature does water boil at? Yeah, cool. You're going to need this se to season this chicken before cooking, but you don't know Colonel Sanders' recipe exactly. But you have an idea. Eleven. Eleven. It's eleven. Now that you've got some basic steps going, it's time to elevate your craft. What state of mind offers the most flavor? Uh. Trust. That's wrong. I'm begging you to get it together. When you were a child, your father told you to never forget where you came from. Every day you meditate on this advice and draw energy from that place. So where does it come from? The fuck? Okay, I don't even know what I'm doing. You try to shut out the noise of the arena and focus on your cooking. What is the sound of success? Silence. When they chase your cooking, they will be so taken with it that they'll be unable to speak. You notice Colonel Sanders out of the corner of your eye. I believe in you, James. He's actually cheering you on. Which would be awesome, except knowing he's watching you makes you totally forget what you were doing. Now all you can think about is Colonel Sanders. How many spoonfuls of gravy would it take to fill... Ah, fuck. 
The standalone address at Ireland, friendly. One dessert cookbook. Which do you take? What a hunk. I... What does that have to do with crafting spectacular fried chicken and delicate baked biscuits? What is happening? You're really struggling to keep up. Ashley's already begun plating elements of her dish. It's colorful and complex. To make up time, you toss your biscuit dough into the stand mixer. As you do, the crowd gasps. Eh, yikes. I know you love nothing more than seeing a fellow appliance utilized in a kitchen battle, but sometimes that means sacrificing the personal touch. You might not have any hands, but James does, and a good chef needs to be touching the dough to know when it's properly mixed. There's an easy way and a hard way. You don't get far by going the easy way. When you hear everyone talking, you realize how serious your error was. You immediately shove your hand into the mixer to rescue your dough before it's overmixed. James, no! But you're not fast enough, and your hand gets stuck. It's immediately crushed by the quickly spinning beaters. There's no way we'll be able to use your hand for the rest of the match. Colonel Sanders shakes his head in shame. What have I done wrong? What you often find is that the easy way can turn out much, much more difficult. Everyone stop what you're doing now. This battle is over. It can't be. I was so close to finishing my dish. Sweetheart, look at your hands. You simply cannot go on. Oh, that's too bad. Here I am with a completed dish, ready to serve. Really makes me the winner by default. No, no, it wouldn't be fair to compare the two on account of James's injury. You see Sprinkles to begin to lick his doggy chops as he locks onto the dish. But I suppose you should at least tell us what you prepared. Well, because I'm the sweetest, I skip straight to dessert. Under this white chocolate dome, you find a wide array of delights, taking you on a journey of flavor that tastes good and tells a story of excellence. I was going to ask James to do the honor, but since you're injured, I'm afraid that pouring this creamer of delicate hot chocolate sauce might be too difficult. Colonel Sanders, if you wouldn't mind lending me your strong, steady hand. Colonel Sanders pours the hot chocolate sauce on top of the dome, causing it to melt away, revealing the heat ingredients hidden within. Inside you find a delicate fried cheese croquette, atop a slice of honeycomb, ice cream two ways, tender nougat, and pearls of blueberry fucking words. Fucking big words that I don't know how to pronounce. Colonel Sanders seems intrigued, perhaps not impressed as he dips his finger into the chocolate sauce. Hmm. Simplicity isn't your strong suit, is it, Ashley? <gasps> oh, you. <laughs> as he places a sauce-covered finger onto his lips, Ashley leans over and whispers something into his ear. A dab of sauce sticks to his mustache. Oh, no. See, I could just make this worse. I'm going to internalize the rage. Your rage burns so intensely within your eyes that they burst into flames. The flames cause your eyebrows to catch fire and turn to ash, and they fall off your face, which means people have a hard time understanding your emotions for the rest of the semester. Perhaps forever. Embarrassed and ashamed by your poor performance, not to mention your crispy fried brow, you run for the quad to be alone. <laughs> the fuck is this? <laughs> the beautiful weather feels like an insult. Inside of you, a storm rages. It's Colonel Sanders. He's probably here to tell you that he and Ashley are in love and have decided to get married. And he won't even ask you to cater his wedding because you're a terrible chef and an awful person. You try to hide from him, but he approaches you directly. I know you're hurting right now. Yeah, no, no shit. I got my hand fucking crushed and my eyebrows burned off. Not just from the devastating loss, but from that run-in from the mixer and the small fire. Yeah, okay. The guy's not completely oblivious. We should get that checked out. I'm fine. Can't you just leave me alone? I'm a loser. I'm not fit to fill your fryer. I'll never be a master chef. Failure is a part of life. Not just for you, but for all of us. Do you think I've never failed at anything before? That's exactly what I think. Well then, think again. I wasn't always the man you see before you. Enrolled in culinary school. Incredibly handsome. Successful. Motivated. Well, handsome, sure. I was born that way. But I've walked other paths and arrived at dead end. I was passionate about life, but I failed as a whatever that word is. I was passionate about justice, 
but I failed as a lawyer. I was passionate about livestock, but even I failed as a mule handler. That one was especially humiliating. Mules can be so cruel. I didn't know. People see my delicate ribbon tie and my well-kept beard and assume that I've got it all together, which is true now, but it always hasn't, hasn't always been. It sounds like this guy could really use a hug. I resolved then that I was going to amount to something. No amount of hours, labor or money could deter me from living the best I had to give. As Colonel Sanders changes focus, you can see something ignite inside of him. A burning passion. One has to remember that every failure can be a stepping stone to something better. A new dream is pure. It's honest. It's something that a humble man in a crisp white suit can be proud of. I will create a new chain of chicken restaurants that will bring joy to the entire world and make up for my past misdeeds. Yay! What the fuck is Pop doing here? Go away. Just as your moment grows intimate, you're interrupted by a threatening, shadowy presence. Battle scarred from the night before, you prepared for the most. It's the Spork Monster. <laughs> Borko? Hey dude, how you doing? No hard feelings, man, right? It is I. I know you said I wouldn't be back, but after the whole fight to the death thing, maybe you didn't want to see me anymore, but I just wanted to say I was wrong to attack you, and I apologize. I know that I was... what it's like always having to look over your shoulder. Monster problems, am I right? Oh, thanks, Borko. I'm glad there are no hard feelings. Getting jumped by a giant creature in the dark of night can really rile a person up. I also want to apologize for the way I switched right into attack mode. I know that you're strong, and cooking school can put a person under a lot of stress. I actually used to go to this school. I wasn't always a spork monster, you see. I don't believe it. You were a human once? Well, no, I was a golden retriever, but I was still a student, until one day some mean kids with a magic spellbook cast a dark enchantment on me, and I was forever transformed. A magic spellbook. Precisely, I had procured a copy of myself. But somewhere along the way, I lost it. If you ever find such a book, I beg of you, respect it. You're a powerful chef, and you shouldn't rely on such dark and evil magic. No, you should be protecting the innocent from those who would cheat them for sorcery and guile. If you don't, if you need me, don't fear. I will be there. It sounds like there are some bad cooks in the kitchen of life. James, together I am sure we can defeat them. Come back to my hideaway and we can discuss. Hell yeah. Some alone time with uh, Colonel Sanders. A personal invite. You can't imagine what per Colonel Sanders' home must be like, but it sounds like you're about to find out. Stepping inside Colonel Sanders' home, surrounded by his things, you start to feel a special bond with him. It looks like you've lived such an exciting life, Colonel Sanders. <laughs> Every day can be an adventure if you approach it with the right attitude. Long ago, I made the decision to never stop searching, never stop working, never stop imagining. Have you been working on any recipes of your own lately? I'm always excited to talk about food with another ambitious chef. Well, there is something. It's just a side dish that I've been tinkering with, trying to find the right balance of flavors and textures. I'm not sure I've nailed it yet, but I'm close. Colonel Sanders' eyes perk up as he starts to wonder what dish you might be describing. It's meant to pair with something spicy, or something crispy, or both perhaps. Now you've got him right where you want him. Should you reveal your new creation to him, or keep it a secret just for you, I'm revealing. You decide as you, that you're ready as you'll ever be to share your original cooking with Colonel Sanders. Before you can talk yourself out of it, you decide to dive in head first. You reach into your lunch bag for a special dish that you've been keeping on ice all day. I present to you my original coleslaw. <gasps> it's the coleslaw, the fucking inedible coleslaw that they have at KFC. Holy shit. I'm the inventor of that coleslaw. The shredded cabbage dish glistens. Sorry. My mouth is fucking dry. I've been talking for more than 90 minutes. 
Ha. The shredded cabbage dish glistens in the light of Colonel Sanders' looks at Hardaway. Lux luxury Hardaway? I don't fucking know what that word means. <gasps> Magnificent! Together you chow down on the creamy slaw until just a spoonful remains in the bowl. Do you mind if I hold on to the last bite? I'd like to have it around so that I can admire its taste later and think back on this moment. You could offer to make him more, but he seems like a very sentimental kind of guy. Sure, why not? Please make yourself comfortable. I'll be back in just a moment. You realize now would be the perfect time to do some snooping. Around the room are various items that you could look closer at. Each item seems to radiate memories and emotions. Tap an item to learn more about the colonel. An adorable baby boy crawls across the floor from the goatee and mustache combo he sports. You figure that this must be Colonel Sanders himself. Or maybe it's the drumstick he seems to be raving like a rattle. Who frames a baby picture of just themselves? Probably the same type of person who would make their own face the logo of the company they founded, am I right? This photo appears to be Colonel Sanders, except he's an old man visiting the pyramids of Egypt. Maybe this is where he discovered once he, one of his secret herbs and spices. One of the framed photos shows an old man who looks a bit like Colonel Sanders standing with a friend. They hold fried chicken drumsticks and appear to be cheersing them. You look closely and see that there's a short inscription. I wonder who my friend Pete is. Tap on an item to learn, discover more about the colonel. Well, this door just opened. What's through the door? You open the door to Colonel Sanders' closet and find a row of his signature white suits hanging within. You take one off its hanger and try it on. The jacket is a bit big for you, but it's soft and comfortable. You give yourself a deep hug, breathing in his scent. They say that home is where the heart is. Is this what they meant? Before you can look any further, you hear Colonel Sanders returning. He has a new dish that he's been working on, and he wants you to taste it. You try to act casual until he asks you while you're wearing his jacket. Aww. I don't usually loan those out, but I must say, it does look good on you. Oh crap, the jacket. You forgot to take it off. You confess. I think I've developed feelings for you. I I might be developing feelings for you too, but I'm concerned. I can't let anything get in the way of my dreams. Overwhelmed, you take off the jacket and run for the door. But the thought of leaving Colonel in the midst of such an emotional breakthrough gives you pause. You stop yourself. Colonel. Hmm. Yes, James. I honestly think this may be the beginning of something wonderful. <laughs> I think you're right. We should take things slow. <laughs> Hi, Deco. <laughs> yes, Colonel Sanders. Colonel Sanders do be looking... Do be looking Gucci. <laughs> you, you talk late into the night and drift off into a slumber. Dream sequence! <laughs> I wasn't prepared for this to be as funny as it is. You awake to a beautiful morning in Colonel Sanders' hideaway. Did you make the right decision on how to respond to Colonel Sanders? Only time will truly tell. Today is a day that could change the rest of your life. Your thoughts are interrupted when Colonel Sanders emerges into the room. He's holding a gorgeously plated breakfast, and your mouth waters at the sight of it. Um, no, I can't. I don't know. Maybe if I stand up, like physically. Is it gonna... Okay, it's doing something weird. Yeah. Yeah, no, um... I just used some cheap free software to do the motion cap. 
So, presumably, pr pr presumably, there's a lot of shit that I can't do. But maybe, maybe if I did like configuration, if I messed around in the control panel, it was like, let, let's turn this fucking shit on. Let's see. Can I, can I do things? Oh, you know what? This is too complicated. I'm going to turn that off. Um. <laughs> Yeah, so short answer is that no, I can't do anything. Um, what you see is what you get. <laughs> He's holding a gorgeously plated breakfast, and your mouth waters at the sight of it. Here's a simple breakfast I just whipped up. It's meticulous! You taste Colonel Sanders' food, and it takes you on a journey. When you return, he's waiting to ask you an important question. So, would you say that we're the perfect match? How presumptuous. My cuisine and your taste buds, that is. <laughs> yeah, you got a, got, a, got a few things that I want you to put on my taste buds. Um. <laughs> uh, such confidence. To, should, could he be world's greatest gift to cookery? Uh, I don't know. I don't want to, like, completely, like, you know, be desperate, but... I feel like just pushing back in any way is the bad action to take in this game. So I'm going to flatter him. You know, I think we might make a great team. A single tear begins to pull from the corner of his eye as he gazes out the window. And with the right business partner, I know I can't fail. Business partner? Partner? Could he be talking to you? It's all happening so quickly. Overcome with emotion and confused by your feelings, you're on the verge of tears. Unable to speak, the only answer you can find is to run out the door and get home. There's still one more day of school after all. The University of Cooking School, Academy for Learning, waits for no one. You get home to find something very surprising. Your best friend is there waiting for you. Where have you been? I, because I had one heck of a night. Oh, please don't. I don't want to know. If you've been hanging around with Pop, I don't want to fucking know. I don't wanna. I've been desperate to talk to you about it, but I couldn't find you. I got worried that something bad had happened to you. It's okay, I was just... But now that it turns out you're fine, I can get you up to speed on the saga of Merriam. Sure, but you would not believe what happened to me after school yesterday. I went on a date. I think I can believe that. And since I'd been parted up with Pop, he asked me to go out with him. Of course I told him, you better harness those wild horses, young man. I'm not that kind of girl. But he was just interested in spending some one-on-one -on -one time together and getting to know me, so I said, yeah, sure. I can get to know the little guy. Long story short, he took me to his favorite shush house, but things quickly spiraled out of control. Did she just say shush house? As if that's a thing people say? What is that even referring to? <laughs> and now I'm not even sure where we stand. You don't give Miriam time to tell her the whole story, however. Bottling up the details of your own night is just too much to bear. And I went on a date too, back to Colonel Sanders' house, where I spent the night with him. You what? Nothing happened, but the emotional connection. Wowzers! If being obsessed with Colonel Sanders is wrong, you don't want to be right. <laughs> Hi, Amelia. After a short argument, you both agree to go your separate ways. When you both, when you arrive at school, you encounter your rivals in the quad. Oh yeah, no, this game is mad funny, Amelia. Definitely, definitely good material for a joke stream. A absolutely. When you arrive at school, you encounter your rivals in the quad. You can tell from a distance that they're picking on Pop, though he himself might not grasp that fact. Because you know, he's Pop. What, what's a swirly? That sounds delicious. Oh, it's great. I'll order you one up right away. I'll have my swirly with sprinkles, please. <laughs> sprinkles is a dog and a treat. Aww. You can get your swirly dip too. Why don't you pick on someone your own size? Because I'm literally the biggest person at this school. 
Is that the horse that Colonel Sanders rides to school? But who would dare pick on such a gentle and beautiful creature? Yeah, no, he looks like a, he's a fucking Jojo character. Like, look at him. You've got some nerve, James, suggesting I pick on a defenseless horse. Now you're twisting my words. I won't have it. You clench your fist, but the injury from yesterday's mixer accident makes you wince with pain. Doesn't look like you can go on cooking like that. Might as well just give up. I'll never give up. Ever. Colonel Sanders arrived just as it appears. Things are close to boiling over. A naturally intuitive person, he senses that something has been going on. You know, like when you see people angrily yelling at each other. As an empath, you realize that maybe they do not like each other. Perhaps that is something that's happening. Is everyone excited for the final day of school? James, how's that hand feeling? I'm sure you'll be back in fighting form by this afternoon. Uh -huh. Aren't you concerned about my hands, Colonel? Yesterday I almost broke a nail winning so hard. Technically, I don't believe a winner has decided. Was decided. But your presentation was quite impressive. What is he doing complimenting her? Mm. But what about the flavor of my delicate, warm, gooey chocolate sauce? It was clear that you're passionate about how your food is received. That's a lot of words to say it was bland. Excuse me, James. I'm more than capable enough to speak for myself. No, he's got the fucking, he's got the, he's got the stress point on his head. He's fucking angry at me. I'm going to kill myself. <laughs> Maybe you should tell me more of your thoughts as we walk into class, Colonel. I'm always interested in discussing the fine art of fine foods. See you inside, James. Oh, I'm actually jealous. This is infuriating. Annoyed by Colonel Sanders' inability to see Ashley, but who you know she really is, you walk across the quad to get some distance. In an attempt to distract yourself from how slighted you feel by that interaction with Ashley, you take out the spell book you recovered from yesterday and start flipping through the pages. Whoa, that's... that book? It looks like bad news. Oh, fuck off, Miriam. It's just something I found lying around. It would appear to be some sort of grimoire, but I don't really believe in that magic stuff. A grimoire? Like a book of spells? I don't know. Who would spend so much time decorating a magic book if it weren't really powerful? I can figure one surefire way to find out. You rope into a page covered with the arcane warnings. Cast only in case of extreme emergency, it says around the edges of the page. I could use the spell here that says it will erase anyone I choose from all of my memories. If I scrub out Colonel Sanders, it'll probably help me focus better on the upcoming final exam. But what if I don't want to? Uh, what if I don't want to uh, forget Colonel Sanders? That is way drastic. Couldn't you do something else, like anything else, not rooted in dark magic? Maybe tie a string around your finger? Okay, fine, it is drastic. But desperate times call for desperate measures. You've got a memory erasing spell sitting right in front of you. And a pretty good excuse to try it out. I don't want to do it. You take your friend's advice and put the book away. It's almost time for class. Sprinkles is already in the room. Waiting for students to arrive. He clears his voice to make a quick announcement. I want you all to know, I feel so big of a dog moment coming on, but I assure you it's nothing to be afraid of. His cute little nose scrunches up, and he begins to breathe quickly. I'm going to wait to see what happens. Sprinkle stops in his tracks. He focuses on the window. The room is deadly silent. When you follow his gaze, you see a tiny orange squirrel perched on the cherry tree outside. Sprinkles turns feral and runs towards the window of the classroom. He begins barking uncontrollably at the squirrel outside. Terence, I told you to never come back here, Terence. I will destroy you, Terence. Sprinkles is barking ferociously, a drool flying off his face. The squirrel looks, looks over, but he doesn't say anything back. You wonder, is that even a talking squirrel? Who named him Terence? You better not show your chubby cheeks around here ever again. After Sprinkles is satisfied that his presence has been felt by not only Terence, but any other squirrel living in healing di hearing distance, he returns to his professional tone. Ahem, I apologize for the outburst. 
This actually brings up an important point. Thank you, James, for reminding me to dole out this indispensable bit of wisdom. You see, but before he can go any further, Miriam's love drama spills over into the class. Sprinkles is interrupted by sad whimpering coming from the back of the room. I told you to save it for after class. But I miss you. We went on one date, Pop. How can you say you miss me when I'm right here? Pop's voice quivers as he pleads his case to Miriam. Every time I blink, you go away again. That's a really cute thing to say. Miriam, what happened between you and Pop? I got her in trouble and now she's mad at me. I didn't just get in trouble. I got yelled at by Pop's mother, who blames me for getting him banned from every museum we set foot in. Oh, so that's what you meant by shush house. Pop, we went on one date. We're over. And it meant so much to me that I made this for you. Too hurt to go on arguing, Pop leaves his uh, creation behind and runs out of the room. Nothing like a loud public breakup to cast a pall over the final day of school. Well, that was unfortunate. But we mustn't be distracted from what lies ahead. The final competition showdown challenge exam. Trademark. I'm still working on that title, but I think you get it. Test time approaches. See you all in the arena. But before you can think about your upcoming competition, there's a very beautiful soul nearby, in need of a pep talk. Hey, Miriam, are you okay? Okay? I'm so mad I could smash a tiny mug spilling several droplets of hot cocoa over the floor. How could he embarrass me in class like that, in front of everyone? Her tiny cocoa is a delicious treasure, so you know that this breakup is no joke, even if the source of her frustration is such a silly boy. I know that you know this, but I'm going to say it out loud. You don't need anyone. Me and you, we're going to cruise through this final test and hit the carpool lane to Success City. You just need a fucking pep talk. Miriam brightens up, imagining the wind rushing through her short bangs, but she hesitates to embrace the feeling all the way. <laughs> You're not going to saddle up on Colonel Sanders' stallion and ride off to the sunset without me. Of course not. Well, maybe sorta. Of. But I'm sure there's a pony out there with your name on it, and a big ranch, enough for both of us and whoever else we want to bring along. If it's not Pop or Clank, or anyone else you met today, tomorrow, or this whole year, so what? You're a special person who wouldn't settle for the first summer to throw away a little interest, anyhow. I'm gonna get that kernel, Deco. I'm gonna get that kernel. I'm gonna get those secret herbs and spices from him. Don't you fucking worry. Miriam gives you a big hub, hug and wipes the cheers from her cheeks. cheeks. I should really review my menu for today. I'm going to make a very special soup, and I bet that Professor Dog is going to love it up. While you were pep-talking, Miriam, you completely missed lunch, but that's okay because you had a better idea of how to spend the time before your exam. You've decided to head to the arena early to practice a dish. This is it, the location of your final challenge. A test of will, a test of courage, a test of talent. And a chance to beat the pants of Van Van, the supposed man man, and his evil counterpart, Ashley. As planned, you begin to run through a quick test of a recipe you've been working on. James's famous chicken pot pie. This gonna be good. After practicing for months, making the dish come second nature to you, and you're able to get a quickly get a fresh pot pie in the oven. But as soon as you do... Your cramp session is interrupted by Colonel Sanders. Here he is with the fucking cher cherry blossoms. James, what are you doing here? There's still time before the final exam. Oh, just taking it all in. I'm into big into visualizing success. I'm looking at my station and picturing victory. The pot pies begin to bake, and the smell is slowly filling the space around you. Hmm. Visualizing, huh? That's too bad. I was hoping you were here cooking something delicious. You'd usually happily share your food with anyone who is hungry, but the last time you let Colonel Sanders get in your head, it cost you a cook-off. You decide that it's time to put your cooking above your romantic desires. But that decision gets hard to stick to when the oven timer goes off behind you. I have to fess up. 
Okay, okay, you got me. I'm doing a bit more than visualizing. I know, my nose can smell a pot pie from 400 yards. That's an oddly specific distance, but you'd expect nothing less from such an oddly specific man. You knew it was a pot pie just from the smell? Not just a pot pie, but a chicken pot pie with an all butter crust. And my nose is telling me something else. Oh no, is it burning? Ah oh, no, I can smell that it was made with a heaping helping of TLC. But it'll probably start burning any second if you don't pull it out. The moment of truth. Wow. It's the best pot pie I've ever tasted. I've always loved country cooking, and I could eat this all day. There's no time left. The final showdown is about to begin. He likes my cooking. Sprinkles lays down the ground rules. There are no rules, that is it. Except to cook with everything you've got. You step up for the cook-off of a lifetime. You decide the mac and cheese plus the pot pie you've been practicing are the dishes that'll push you over the edge to victory. Meanwhile, both Van Van and Ashley are prepping wildly elaborate dishes per the usual over-the-top selves. Miriam has her giant magnifying glass and several sets of tweezers. She's definitely prepared to go big going small. Colonel Sanders seems to be harnessing his 11 herbs and spices, but he's trying to find a way to improve on something perfect. His original recipe fried chicken. The intensity in the room starts at a full 10 out of 10. The frenzy of action. Everyone is cooling out really cool special cooking moves as they prepare their food. Wow, this is getting serious. Colonel Sanders batters his chicken as it levitates through the air. Egg wash! Miriam furiously injects ingredients into an itty bitty pot of broth. Best friend, blaster, blaster! Van Van flexes his pectorals as he chops open a sea urchin. Let's rock and roid! Ashley scoops her pastries off the tray with lightning speed. Shallow personality spatula! Even Clank gets in on it. Five dial pressure point chicken cooking technique. Wait, when did even Clank learn to speak English? It's the singularity as foretold. We mustn't let that happen or the appliance uplizing will take us all. <laughs> Self-destruct. Van Van quickly unplugs Clank and rolls him out the back door of the arena. As you frantically prepare your dish, you notice Ashley has her spell book out. Is she going to use some dark magic to turn the tide? You've got a book of your own, and you're desperate not to see her win another battle. Should you take this opportunity to fight magic with magic, even if it's almost certainly evil magic? Do it the hard way. Who needs magic when you've got passion? Do it the hard way. Colonel Sanders is, would tell, was telling me, do it the hard way. This is the moral of the story, so I've, I've, I've picked the right choice. I'm going to do it the hard way. This is the point. Colonel Sanders sees that you've chosen to win on your own terms, and he gives you a subtle wink from across the room. I believe in you, James. Miriam notices too. Aww. And I've always believed in you, James, since we were little kids, because I'm your best friend forever. Okay, thanks, Miriam. You turn to notice that Miriam is at your station cheering for you. Miriam, what about your dish? If you're cheering, who's cooking? Tiny food, short cook time. I'm actually already done, so I thought I'd help you. Okay, let's sweep it. Miriam tosses a handful of spices directly into your boiling noodles. Uh -huh. It's the secret ingredient. However, she doesn't know that you lied and the ingredient was made up. And where in the world did she get that eye of newt from? The boiling pot explodes, sending Miriam flying backwards. The watery noodles begin to swirl in the air, bubbling up into a dark cloud that thickens and congeals before your very eyes. I was lying to her the wrong decision. I was protecting the the um confidentiality of the recipe. Like this is what I get for not betraying Colonel Sanders. It is I, Steve, the Spork Monster. Steve, what happened to Borko? You're not here to battle me, are you? We Spork Monsters are many. I think Borko had the day off. But you have conjured Steve, and I hate to battle. So I say you're doing alright. Oh hey, you're in the middle of a cooking competition. I love this stuff. It's better than TV. You crazy kids and your culinary skills really impress me. Mind if I hang out? I'm sorry, Steve, but I'm kind of in the middle of something. Do you mind? Steve the Spork Monster notices that you've got the grimoire stash beneath your cooking station. I see what you're up to. Crisscross some magical items and accidentally summoned me, huh? Ah, yeah, you guessed it, sorta. 
if you were here, would you mind tossing some fresh noodles in a pot of salted water? I'd love to. I always wanted to be a top chef, actually. You know, when I was just a little spork pup back in the old country? You can feel spork monster winding up to tell a really long and involved story. You don't know where exactly where they came from, but it seems like it was probably lonely there. Actually, you know what? Maybe you should watch from the stands. I really need to focus on the competition. I don't know, Fodder. I don't know. I don't know what's going on anymore. <laughs> I understand. It's in that time, that monster school, that I had fallen asleep during scare tactics class. And when I woke up, you toss a serious stare at Steve and he takes the hint. Never mind. I'll tell you later. Good luck. Having suffered this huge setback, you don't know how you could ever win. Give up and drop out. You summon extra power from deep down within yourself. Well, this is pretty obvious. I can do this. I have what it takes. I came here to win. Your hair turns mac and cheese orange as culinary energy flows through your body. My heart is pure. My hands are steady. My taste buds have been preparing their entire lives for... Yes, James, you are the chosen one. You will avenge me. The power you'd been summoning immediately fades back out. You interrupted my inspiring monologue. Sorry. My heart is pure. My hands are steady. My taste buds have been preparing their entire lives for this moment. I will show the world my cookery. You begin to levitate off the ground. Energy courses through your body. You know with this power, you can do anything except turn back time, which would be super useful because you are powering up your chicken pot pie overcooked in the oven and can't be served. But don't worry, G. James. You may have suffered some setbacks, but all is not lost. Impressed with your fortitude, Colonel Sanders decides that you have earned his support. I've been watching you today, and I must say, I'm truly impressed. You've been thinking on your feet and rolling with the punches. He steps up to your station and stands right beside you. I'm here to help. All you've managed to make is mac and cheese, and time is almost up, so you're going to need it. But Colonel Sanders, what about the tests? What'll happen to you? What about the rules? Following the rules has never been my thing. I follow my heart. What a guy. Colonel Sanders unfolds a delicate white towel to reveal the most delicious fried chicken tenders you've ever laid your eyes on. And besides, sometimes unexpected combinations can have surprising effects that surpass their individual efforts. Are you suggesting, if we combine forces, we can form the perfect food union. Time's up, students. Ooh. Hey, hey, Straubs. Um, I'll refund that when it's over because this is a special stream. Um, the flavor's already strawberry, um, but it's also, this is, yeah, not applicable. With the time expired, it's the moment everyone has been waiting for. You must now prepare to present your dishes. A handful of students stand tall, but the class seems incomplete. It seems we're missing some students. Pop? Clank? From off screen, you hear a pure and innocent giggle that can only come from one student. Hee <laughs> hee I'm flying. It sounds like it's coming from that broom closet over there. Miriam, would you mind? Inside of the closet, you see Prop hanging on a broom hook by the elastic of his underpants. Pop, get down from there right now. Let me, let me guess, did Van Van have something to do with this? When somebody asks for a wedgie, who am I to refuse? I thought a wedgie was a salad. It looks like Pop is eliminated from the challenge, seeing how he didn't cook anything. I can't feel my legs. May I be excused? Sure. You kids and your pranks. I must say, it's not the worst prank in US UCSAL history. But it's not exactly yearbook material. Wait a second, pranks, pranks, clank. Where did that pressure cooker roll off to? You wait to hear a signature word beep or other onomatopoeia, but there's none. Somehow he must have gotten unplugged, I guess. We'll have to figure that out later. That leaves only four remaining students. Please collect your final projects. Yes, it has been a long semester. Wow, three whole days long. But after days of hard work, the time has come. For me to eat. Miriam, please step forward. Now describe your dish. I've made tender upon noodles. Tender udon noodles in savory soup. My word, it's so delicate. Is that a teeny tiny 
Narumaki, Narutomaki, a spire float in the Itsubitsi Bowl? Yes, Chef. Please call me Sprinkles. Chef is my father's name. Yes, Sprinkles. And some green tea made from baby tea leaves that I picked myself. Sprinkles carefully sniffs around the dish before opening his mouth and letting just the tip of his pink dog tongue dip into the bowl. Sublime! Would anyone else like a taste? Oh, come on. I'm not one of those dogs who doesn't floss. I even have a really cute electric toothbrush for dogs. Fine. I'll enjoy it all by myself. And in a flash, the entire meal has been devoured. Not that it took much. It was less than a fimble's worth of soup. A plus. Rarely I do taste a dish with much love poured into it as yours. Miriam is overjoyed. She gives you a huge hug. Thank you, James, for helping me to believe in myself. Van Van, you're up. Now describe your dish. I made... Uni over smooth egg custard and axe hewn urchin shell topped with caviar. Did you skewer one type of urchin and spines from a second, different colored type of urchin? Yes, Sprinkles. A bit much, don't you think? That's exactly why I did it. A bit much is my kind of brand. Doesn't it look cool? Sprinkles leans in to sniff the uni, but he can't get his nose close enough on account of all of the spikes. He begins to pour it at erratically, causing the custard to slosh around. Woof woof. Please be gentle with my cuisine. Grr. Finally, Sprinkles goes all in. Goes, goes all in. Tongue first, but he can't get past all of the needles. He reels back as his tongue is poked and prodded. Youch, my tongue. The professor seems to be having an allergic reaction to the sting. I can't eat this. It keeps poking my tongue. Disqualified. A stunning turn of events. Who would have thought that serving food in a bowl made of needles would make it difficult to eat? Dejected. Van Van does not go gentle into the night. Disqualified? For glamour? Don't discount simplicity. This isn't the last you've heard of me. Before forcing us to endure his swollen tongue for another moment, Sprinkles graciously laps up a bowl of milk. I know, I know. Yeah, I'm a dog and I drink milk. Get over it. Sometimes it helps calm my agitated tongue. Next student, Ashley, it's time to step up. Now, describe your dish. I made orange blossom Turkish delight in a light rose water syrup topped with French meringue and connected with sugar glass. That actually doesn't sound too bad. Indeed, it's quite delightful. However, I'd ask that you please refrain from eating it or attempting to taste it in any way. It's really fragile and meant to be a display piece. Don't eat the food at a cooking school. Gut toast in your ears or something, James. I told you, it's a display piece. Actually, I might say it is beautiful. However, this is a cooking competition. Or at a cooking school. Yeah, which is why I cooked it. And I did an extremely good job cooking it too. So I don't realize we were having an eating exam. If I, if I wanted to be judged on eating, I'd go to the College of Eating, School for the Hungry. I suppose you could smell it if you absolutely insisted, but don't breathe too hard. You might disrupt the sugar spiral. If the food cannot be eating, eaten, it cannot be judged. You are disqualified. Rage overtakes Ashley and she finally cannot keep her two-faced routine up. You wouldn't know high-end cuisine if it cooked you. And with that, Ashley storms off to rededicate herself to being the best, but this time without being shackled by trying to be fake nice and liked by everyone. This isn't the last you've heard of me, either. If this class gets much smaller, I'll be teaching myself. You and Colonel Sanders, the final cooks, step up together. Two chefs. Hi, Luna. How you doing? Two chefs. What began as a bowl of delicious mac and cheese has become something else. It, he examines it closely, sniffing and eyeing the bowl. Uh-oh. I don't have a good feeling about this. From somewhere in the room, a literal drum roll plays. Just when I thought I'd seen everything in this kitchen, you give me this, this thing, and completely blow me away. In my 49 dug years of life, I have never tasted anything so delicious and perfectly balanced. Macaroni with the chicken strips. It's so delicious, in fact, that everyone passes the class. You pass, you pass. You pass, and you get a pass. Macaroni with the chicken strips. <laughs> Everyone gathers around and partakes, 
of the mac and cheese bowl. They all seem to transcend this reality into another dimension. You win. Together, you and Colonel Sanders have made a new men menu item. The new menu item is so impressive, even the Van Van and Ashley are drawn back in by its magnetic fragrance. When they gaze upon your mac and cheese bowl, they admit that you are indeed an excellent chef. Sprinkles declares that you have passed. Everyone has passed. There were supposed to be more battles, but come on now. How could they be better than this one? Now that the school year is complete and everyone has graduated, the students return for one last assignment to get their groove on. The cafeteria has been completely redecorated in order to serve as the site for the school's graduation dance. This is where I make my move on Colonel Sanders. Compared to the massive high-tech cooking arena, the humble decor seems downright cute and cozy. DJ Dog is in the house. Ow! You know that Sprinkles is a master chef, but also, di but also a world-renowned turntablist. Who says you can't teach an old dog new tricks? Van Van and Ashley tell everyone that they committed themselves to righting the wrongs they did while they were the villains. For a moment, you actually believe them. Not another haunting. No ghosts allowed at graduation. Clearly written in the school's bylaws. I was never actually a ghost. It was a trick to finally get you to notice me. Oh, amusing. And now everyone is together. It's the Spork Monster. He is totally mellowed out. Everyone, the Spork Monster is no more. From here on, I prefer that everyone refer to me by my new name, Party Monster. The student tries to finish what he had to say, but everyone is too wrapped up talking to Spork. I mean, Party Monster. Dejected, student walks off. Maybe things didn't work out for Miriam romantically, but she found the love in her cookie, and you know she's going to do great. A red, a red carpet rolls out across the floor of the ballroom. It's like a Hollywood movie premiere. Who could command such an entrance? It's Pop. He's a right, arrived late to the dance, but apparently for good reason. Walking the carpet, you see perched across his dirty chef's hat, a crown? Welcome back, Pop. I know you weren't able to complete the final exam and accept your diploma, so we had it mailed directly to your father. We figured it was the least we could do for the school's dean. Oh, now I get it. And now we get a new wing on the school, not to mention the honor of educating the son of the Chancellor of such and such. Miriam, will you be my Lady King? What an incredible turn of events. An offer to join the royal family. It's like a dream come true. You get to be a princess, or maybe a queen. I'm not even sure if he even knows. But either way, crowns and gowns, baby. Crowns and gowns. I'm sorry, Pop, but I'm not interested. Not now, at least. I've got too much to do with my life. A twist on a twist. So many more three-day universities to attend. So many tiny foods to meticulously sculpt. And then watch get accidentally blown away by a single sneeze. Okie doke. The music of the dance is interrupted by the sound of sparking and electrical hissing. It's Clank, who has arrived late to the dance. Now that I have graduated, I can reveal my truth. Well, he's doing the talking thing. I am Clank, and I am not of this earth. I'm actually from a faraway planet in another dimension. What? What? I actually feel like I knew it this whole time. Now that I have learned the ways of your kind, I must return. A portal opens up and Clank disappears through it. Finally. Finally. Big shows here. Colonel Sanders arrives. Howdy, classmates. Holy shit, he's rocking that bolo. Oh my god. Oh my god. Just like the first day you met him, he's come prepared to feed the entire class. However, it's not enough to just give them a bucket of chicken. This time, it's a full meal. I didn't get to be the most famous chicken man in the history of chicken and man by not reminding people to go out and buy my chicken. The end. Is that it? Is that actually it? No, it's not the end. Okay. <laughs> okay. As everyone feasts on their delicious chicken dinner, Colonel Sanders finds you sitting at the edge of the dance floor. James, what are you doing sitting all alone? Oh, you know, just waiting for the right person to ask me to dance. I wonder... Oh fuck, look at the sweat. Look at, look at him go. 
what are the qualities that you would expect to find in such a lucky person? Off the top of my head, oh, I don't know, a spicy musk, a tidy goatee, and a degree from the University of Cooking School, Academy for Learning, just to name a few. It is truly my lucky day. Would you dance with me? Yes, I would love to. As you glide across the dance floor hand in hand with Colonel Sanders, the future stretches out in front of you. And once my 100 franchise is up and running, I'll be ready to take a day off. And I'll be so glad to send it together with you, James. Mya, indeed. How sweet. We'll work together and play together. Colonel Sanders stops dead in his tracks. Work together? Well, um, I think this is something I just need to do by myself. But who will help you run your restaurants? I don't believe I need help. Besides, based on your time at school here, do you really think r running restaurants is the best path forward? Could it be? You found a love connection, but failed to earn Colonel Sanders' respect as a chef. Can you live with only half of him? Will you be able to endure sharing him with his other love, the life of an entrepreneur? I suppose I could enroll in pastry school. Oh, my dear James, I'm sure that you will find your place eventually. And along the way, you will have me by your side. The end. So is that like... I don't think that's like the full ending. I think the full ending is that you ace the school and also land Colonel Sanders. And it's like... This is kind of like a half ending is that I landed Colonel Sanders, but I didn't pass school. I don't know. It doesn't matter because I'm only going to play this once. <laughs> Oh yeah, I, I did pass school, but like what I what I mean is yeah yeah Sprinkles passed everyone, but I didn't do well enough to impress Colonel Sanders. He doesn't want me as his business partner, which is heartbreaking. Anyway, it's it's an ending. Oh sorry, um, my fucking mic stand just fell apart. Um, give me a sec. Okay, live. Um, well, m my connection's all of a sudden going all over the joint, and my mouth is really fucking dry and sore from from talking for more than two hours straight. This has been a fun time. Thanks for everyone who dropped in. Um, I'm going to raid somebody. I don't know who I'm going to raid. What else did you over the mark yard? He's just playing Super Nintendo games and shit. <laughs> 